All right, guys, it's time for our guest. You guys know him as Stevie Richards. He's an extreme rising star now, guys. Listen, Stevie Richards, it's so good to have you on the show. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm doing great. How are you guys doing? I can't complain, man. We're excited. Listen, I'm a Philly kid. This is Donnie. I am excited about Extreme Rising. I'm going to the Extreme Reunion show in April. I went again in June. I'm going now in December. All the shows have been actually pretty exciting in my book. You are now in a, in a tournament match. You had two matches against Luke Hawks that I've seen so far. Now is a third in Philadelphia, but this time it's for a chance to advance to the finals for the Extreme Rising World Heavyweight Championship. Uh, now tell, tell us about this show, what your, what your feelings are going into this show, and, and your feelings about fighting Luke Hawks again, but this time with so much on the line. Well, I mean, Luke Hawks and I, if it was under different circumstances, I think we would actually be probably workout partners or possibly even friends because we, we share a lot of the same passion, a lot of the same determination. Uh, Luke is much younger and doesn't have as many years' experience in wrestling as me, but he really does have a desire every day to get better and become a better wrestler, just like I do. So uh, we each won one match. He beat me in Corona, New York. I beat him in Philadelphia the next day. And uh, this is not just a rubber match. This is a match in the second round of the tournament, like you said. And the winner goes on to the finals to either face Rhino or Devin Storm, two men which I've never faced before in the ECW era. So it's pretty interesting all around the, the potential matchups. I'm looking forward to wrestling Luke. I, just like any other show, I'm going to be in the best shape of my life. I'm going to do what I can to give the fans hopefully the best match on the show and uh, not do anything to uh, – do anything less than represent the product in a very positive and productive way. All right, well, listen, we had Luke Hawks on, and while he did, he showed, he was talking, he was throwing everybody under the bus like he always does, but he did, he showed <laughs> some serious respect towards you. He did, and I was, I was stunned, but as soon as he showed that respect, he almost immediately withdrew it and then yelled about you uh, for about five minutes, which was fun. Um, just, just um, I'm, I know that there's the titles on the line, but but is this more about that? He, he's a young guy. You're the well, you're a veteran. Is this more about um, getting him over? Because he is one of the future future stars. If Extreme Rising continues to grow the way it does, Luke Hawks is definitely one of the cornerstones of this company going forward. Uh, do you do you feel the same way? And do you feel like you working with him could put him over the edge as one of those top guys? Well, there's no doubt that Luke picked me for a reason, and then picked me out of the crowd because I I am the biggest test for him physically. Uh, from a from a stamina conditioning uh, and also from a mental standpoint, and that's that's what Luke tries to do. He tries to get inside your head, just like football, baseball, basketball. When these guys talk crap, trash, MMA, and of course pro wrestling, they try to get inside your head and they try to 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 take you out of your supposed game or your strategy or whatever. I don't look at it that way. And if Luke, you know, you can have a personal problem with somebody but still respect them. I don't think Luke and I. Are, are going to be playing video games together. I don't think Luke and I are going to be going to church together. I don't think Luke and I are definitely not going to be going to a bar partying together because that's not what I do. Uh, but we can have some mutual professional respect. And, and you know, it's just like, I, I mean, you're a UFC fan, right? I, I don't know yeah. who isn't at this point. Well, those guys, they might be friends, but up until the fight, they, they do show disdain. They have to have a mental outlook of hating each other in order to be the best and go on and win. Uh, you know, I'll leave my intensity not for this radio show. I'll leave my intensity for the night when you actually pay your money, when Luke's in front of me, and I can take my aggression out on him rather than just being a uh, blowhard. <laughs> True. Mike, you got a question? Yeah, Stevie, you know, you're doing a lot of great things for Extreme Rising currently, but, you know, a lot of people will remember you as an ECW star and also a WWE star. And uh, currently there, there's a great article up on WWE.com about the relaunch of the ECW brand back in 2006. And uh, you're one of the people who's quoted pretty heavily in that piece. I just want to know your overall impressions. Why do you think that that relaunch was ultimately unsuccessful? Uh, Because Vince McMahon and the powers that be in WWE did not want it to be successful. No other explanation but that. It had every right and every reason and every... uh, uh, proven uh, history to succeed and be different, but they just didn't want it to be. I mean, do you, do you think they were more worried about just having the brand name itself rather than what the product was all about? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. They did have a right to do whatever they want. They paid for the, the brand. They paid for the library. 
Uh, they've made a lot of money off that library, I might add, so it's been very profitable. So I don't see them as seeing it as, as a uh, – emotionally, it could be termed as a failure or, you know, nostalgically, but not from a financial standpoint. ECW did not uh, lose money for the WWE. Hmm. Um, in that same article, um, one of your quotes, you know, kind of caught my eye. And you said, I know it's popular to say you're a Paul Heyman guy. I'm not a Paul Heyman guy. So I was just wondering, is the motivation behind that quote based on you kind of not believing that you're like a hand-picked Heyman guy in the same way that a Brock Lesnar is? Or is it due to maybe some type of animosity the fans might not be aware of? Like, what's the, the motivation behind that quote? No motivation at all. Just, uh, I mean, I was a hand-picked Paul Heyman guy when I was with, uh, you know, Raven, and then I went on to be big Stevie Cole at the BWO. Obviously, I had the support of Paul Heyman. I wouldn't have... I wouldn't have went anywhere, and he, he taught me a lot, and he encouraged me a lot. There's no better motivator that I've ever met in my life, much much less in wrestling, uh, than Paul Heyman. It wasn't a slight. I just put it in the way that it, it's sort of cliche to say that without even knowing what kind of person he is. I'm sure Paul, Danny Doring and, and other people that I'm really close friends with uh, that Paul never paid for the last six months of ECW would definitely have a lot more claim to say that they aren't Paul Heyman guys. Uh, more so than me. Bridget? Yes, yeah, Stevie. You know, you've always had a very strong cult following. A lot of people, myself included, always felt that you were just one of the better overall performers in the business, in ring work, mic work. And then you came to uh, WWE when you debuted there. You're imitating other wrestlers. And then you went on to be the leader of Right to Censor. But then after that, you never, you know, they never really gave you any type of push after that. Do you think that those, uh, your initial stint with WWE that basically typecast you or held you back from reaching the next level in the company? Well, hey, from that standpoint of opportunity and stuff, uh, I made the most out of every opportunity that was handed to me, I mean, even some that weren't handed to me, like Stevie Knight Heat. I think you guys and everybody would probably agree with that. I made the most out of every supposed bad situation that, that it was handed me or even a situation didn't look like it was going to be successful. I, I feel like being a subjective business, all I can do is just do what I can. Uh, there's a term that, that, that people in power in WWE said that there's no such thing as a push. It's mythical. Uh, I would beg to differ that I can't go out and say, hey, I want to wrestle the Rock at WrestleMania, so now I'm going to make it happen. Uh, no, that can't. <laughs> that doesn't work that way. No more than when I was in the pay-per-view main event with Terry Funk and the Sandman. There was probably people in that main event that deserved to be there more than me. But Paul Heyman thought that I was the fit, subjectively put me in that match, and all I could do was, you know, make him right or wrong for making that decision. That's that's the business. It's it, There is pushes. There is subjective opinions by people in charge, and I can only work as hard as I can, be in the best shape that I can, and control what I can control in my career and life. Everything else is is just pretty much you hope for the best. Uh, listen, jumping, jumping back to Extreme Rising now, Extreme Union, the whole thing. Uh, I saw you had a, an awesome video you came out with just a few weeks ago. Uh, you were very critical of uh, some of the, the uh, veteran talent from ECW being brought back and how they were treating their uh, treating their time back with, with the fans, Raven uh, specifically. Uh, just you want to talk about that and talk about um, – because I was at the Extreme Reunion show, and there was the, the crowd was very disappointed. They were there. That, that crowd was huge. And was there for with an open mind at first, but they turned quickly because of the production of the show and and the, the talent and how they they showed up. But you you showed up great in great shape, and you, as you have since then too. What was your motivation behind the video and talking about Raven and such? I'm trying to I try to more and more times than not. Obviously, the, you know that I don't do many of these wrestling interviews, and I I really do at my core hate to hear myself talk, which may be. A negative in wrestling because I know a lot of people love to hear themselves talk and put themselves over and, and cut promos. But uh, they asked for a video, they, and I said, "Well, I'm going to do a video." They, they asked for a promo. I said, "Well, I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the camera on, hit record. I'm not even going to focus, which people have <laughs> have criticized me for. Uh, I'm not even going to do anything but just turn it on and talk." I go, "Maybe two minutes. It might be twenty minutes." I go, "But do not edit it." Is my real feelings. I, I occasionally will do that. I'm not very often. So they agreed to that. So that was the video. I just, I basically talk, talked about my feelings. I, I mean what I say 100% in that video. 
I believe that the fans that went there in April, and even the, especially the fans now that forgave everything in April and are coming back in June and in September or November and December and future shows, should be afforded the the um, you know the benefit that hey listen these guys are going to show up they're going to work hard they're going to be in shape they're not going to embarrass the product they're not going to they're not going to make you feel like you're wasting your money and I feel like Raven goes out there and he basically does not give the fans their money's worth. I, no, I That's completely it. Listen, and I, I really do feel like Shane. I, I mean, I'm, in, I'm sorry. Let me finish real quick. Uh, the Shane Douglas thing. I mean, that perception is reality. I've heard that for 22 years in my career, and he's one of the people that's always told me that. So why can't I turn it around and say, "Hey, you're booking a show in Pittsburgh, and you put yourself on top." That's a little shady. <laughs> yeah, that, it's true. Hey, listen, people have complained about the booking of the show. That the idea is good. The idea of having the older talent with the younger talent infusion is a very good idea. It's something that could honestly work in today's society, especially with the PG WWE era that we we always talk about here. Now, now. What what do you see as the future of Extreme Rising? What do you see like the direction of this company? Is it is it infusing a lot more younger talent and kind of weeding out the older talent and, and depending more on the younger guys, or is it always going to depend on the the ECW veterans coming back in to, to add a touch of that to the to the product? I think it's at, at the base, the foundation of any wrestling promotion or any company in and out of wrestling should be that everybody that, that is given a paycheck or an opportunity to perform in any way should earn their keep, should earn the spot that they're supposed to have and not half-ass it and not phone it in or do anything like that. I, I believe in hard work and I believe in rewards from that. As long as the extreme rising uh, doesn't overextend themselves and start saying, hey, we're running – you know, we're running like a 20-day Europe, European tour or we're going to go on the road every weekend. For the, you, you can't financially sustain that. And plus the fact that do we have a full roster to count on right now? I, I don't think it's an old or a young or a veteran or a rookie thing. I think it's if you're here to work hard and you're, you're here with a positive attitude and help this company out, then you'll always have work. That's a great. That's a great look, outlook on it. To be honest with you, we, that's not a way I have ever looked at it. But it's true, especially with the company ki- tra- coming up right now. You know what I mean? It's, it's a tough time financially for anybody, but especially a wrestling company. Listen, Stevie, tell everybody where they can find you, where they're going to find your wrestling coming up, and where they can find you on the internet and all that stuff. Well, I have a, I have a technology site. That's why people made fun of me having out of focus video in that promo we talked about. Uh, but you can go to uh, the letter T, the number four. S H O W. That's T Four Show dot com. That's that's all my technology stuff. There's also some fitness stuff up there, and uh, I'll be wrestling. The next show I have is actually that Extreme Rising. Also, I'll be doing a seminar uh, with our video Thursday night at the C Z W School. So it's twenty dollars. Anybody who's a wrestler or not a wrestler wants to uh, come and you know I'll just pass the knowledge on that I that I learned throughout the years from people like Raven, Shane Douglas, and all the all the veterans in the business. And then I have the Fan Fest uh, on Saturday, and then Saturday night will be the event. Hopefully I'll see you guys there. Yes, definitely. We will be there at the Fan Fest. We will be there after the show. Hopefully we'll be there interviewing you when you win the championship, man. Good luck. We we appreciate your time today, too. Oh, don't put that kind of pressure on me. I'll take it one match at a time. Luke is, <laughs> All Luke right. is no pushover, so... No, no, Luke, and, and then you got Devin Storm and Rhino afterwards. But, hey, man, you, you've been doing this long enough. You're in great shape. You can do it. We know you can do it, man. We want you to win. Thank you. I appreciate it.